Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the On My Block Podcast, Backer Podcast. It's a somber day. I'm your host, Mike Wall. Find me at MikeWall68 on uh, Twitter, process to perform on Instagram. I say it's a somber day because that was a demoralizing loss that the Packers suffered to the uh, Minnesota Vikings yesterday at home at Lambeau, 24 to 10. Uh, the score was actually not indicative of how how bad that game was. Uh, BetOnline.ag, a sponsor of our show, had the uh, Vikings, I believe, at one and a half favorites uh, by the time kickoff happened because of the, the game they had last week against the, the Niners. And it turns out they were way off, way off. Having said that, BetOnline is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, football, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting on your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. So head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get into the action. Remember, use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. So it's 24 to 10, and there, like there's, there's two themes of the day. Let's just start with that. <clears throat> Number one, and it's crazy because we have an offensive head coach. We've always had an offensive identity. This is not a confident, confident team offensively. Jordan Love led the team in passing and rushing. 24 for 41, not good. 229 yards, not good. Not really 229, net 196. Touchdown and interception. Rushing. Four for 34 on scrambles, which was almost 50% of our total rushing. Uh, Aaron Jones, seven for 29. AJ, six for 11. That's a 1.8 uh, yards per carry average if uh, you're keeping score at home. 74 total yards rushing for team. As I said before, 34 for, for uh, love. So you're thinking that's about 40 yards for the running backs. The Packers... Here's what here's what the Packers offensively just can't do right now. And you can blame it on so many different things. But the bottom line is if you to contrast these two teams, one team can stay on schedule, one team cannot. The Packers, so they just struggle to make each play a positive play. Two yard play, four yard play, five yard play, three yard play. Contrast that with the Vikings. Kirk Cousins is making something out of every play, or darn near every play. First guy's not open, hit the second guy. Not going to get 20 yards, take five. Quick outs open for three. He might run for two more, done. But we're going to keep trying to move the chains, and then everything else opens up. This team is feast or famine. And it's it's not – I shouldn't say feast or famine like there's only big plays. But even the simple stuff – feels like a real accomplishment right now for this team. In other words, just getting a first down, you feel like oh, it's like a breath of fresh air. The second thing is, and I guess it's not, it's, it's an add on, but on both sides of the ball, there's just, there's glaring miscues that prevent the coaching staff, the locker room, any particular one group to do their job as it's supposed to be done. Like the position requirements of the sport are not being met on so many levels and so many different players that you can't really evaluate this team or how individual players are playing. And that's a really difficult thing. Um, The defense holds the Vikings to 31 rushes for 62 yards. Now, listen, they're not a good rush. They're the worst rushing team in the league or, or darn near it. So you do your job. From that standpoint, but then Kirk Cousins goes 21 for uh, 23 for 31, 274, two touchdowns. They've got three receivers over 80 yards receiving. So uh, Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, who's ridiculous, and the our our guy, friend of the show, KJ Osborne, all just have great days. The Vikings, uh, we sacked them three times. The Vikings get four sacks on us. DJ, so here's. Here's like this why this game is nuts. Because Daniil Hunter is the, the sack leader. But if you watch this the tape, if you watch tape for the last couple of weeks, you think about who might hurt us. I go into the game really thinking Jonathan Bullard's going to have a good day, and he did. But DJ Wanham 
number 98 looks like he's in, he made all pro yesterday against our guys, against our tackles, against our tight ends. He made all pro. I mean, he looked amazing. So when you think about the, the, the culmination of Sunday, what you put on the field, right? It's a combination of you got drop passes, you got poor throws, you got indecisive play at the quarterback position, particularly in the passing game. You get physically defeated on multiple fronts in the running game, outmatched in a number of spots, outmatched physically, outmatched technically, outmatched schematically. You, you pick. Uh, the pass defense against – that's a really good unit. When Kirk Cousins is on, that's a really good unit. They don't have Justin Jefferson. I would argue that Kevin O'Connell is reaching deeper into his bag. And what they show, what the Minnesota Vikings show, if you really just start watching like game to game – is that they self-scout really well and they game plan a lot better than we do as far as I'm going to show you something that we've done before and now I'm going to do something completely different. We'll show a little bit on tape. So the big takeaway for me is you got beat by a better team, no doubt. They're just a better team right now because they have better quarterback play. And they have some guys at some key positions that are doing things really well. Harrison Smith is always going to be a problem. Uh, their other team captain over the back there, 44. I always forget his name, but I shouldn't. He had a great game. Uh, Josh Metellus, he had a great game yesterday. I mean, those guys are really, really good players. And when you have key players at, like, the defensive quarterback position, um, it's just really difficult to – It's just this team, it's just really difficult to figure out what they're trying to accomplish on offense, quite frankly. Like, the defensive stuff – Listen, you gave up 24 points, and Kirk Cousins is on one, and there's there's a bunch of that. But, I mean, gosh, the time of possession is 36 to 23. I mean, you're you're giving up six minutes of ball, and it's not just one side or the other. It's literally you've got to get more three and outs, and you can't keep going three and out. And at the beginning of the game, you watch this. Let's watch the tape. But you start watching this game, and you're going, what are we trying to do? So first, let's just go first series just for just for giggles. And my big thing here is, so you got the check down, you get the quick out, you have no pass rush, and it's just the mentality is like, let's get the ball out quick, okay? Let's do everything we can to get the ball out quick on that first play, I'm trying to go back here. But you got two by two. Come on, Mike. All right, you got two by two here. You got a four man. You got a four man rush. They're in nickel. They're they're not showing anything. You got time here. You're gonna get five out in protection. You settle. You might just be trying to get the ball to get a completion. I mean, listen. Before I got to Green Bay, they used to run sprint right option for Brett every time he'd throw into the second row. That's how he'd kind of get. Okay, now he's ready for the game. Holmgren would just call the play, knowing that he was going to throw into the second row, and then we could just start playing football. So maybe you're just trying to get a completion here. My whole thing is you got a four-man pass rush, five-man protection. You got people out. Let's try to get more than two yards on the first play. That's all. It's just the mentality is different, right? So what are we doing here? We go 12 or 21 personnel. We have uh, 12 personnel, excuse me. We have AJ and Aaron in the backfield. We saw this play a lot last year where they'd start running the bubble and then they'd just run the, the, they'd run the, the fullback dive. So they look like they're going to run the bubble with Aaron Jones over the top. By the way, Aaron Jones hasn't touched the ball yet. And what they're going to do is they're going to soften that defensive end. Now, we saw Christian McCaffrey from a different position, albeit it ends up being the exact same thing, exact same personnel. They were going zero. But you look here, they're looking at cover two. They're probably going to rotate. But you're going to end up here in a bubble situation where you have two lead blockers and you have the nearest defender on the 34 yard line with Aaron Jones, if he wants to get the ball here. So they end up running the dive because they, they soften that defensive end. You could very easily throw this, the, the little bubble to, to Aaron Jones here, but AJ gets a good run, gets third and one. And this is where it all, the wheels start falling off immediately. So this is a, this really is a microcosm of the season. So Aaron Jones is in the inside slot. You got a three by one. They have, they're going to run a fullback dive here. And <clears throat> they notice that Harrison Smith is kind of screwing around. He looks like he might be covering uh, Jones right here, but he's not. He's just kind of screwing around in the box. 
because everyone thinks they're going to run the ball. So they want to run an inside receiver screen here and just run the arrow out with, with Jones and get two blockers. Somebody doesn't tell Aaron Jones. There's a miscommunication of some sort. And so the offensive line is going to block for A.J. Dillon. And by the way, he, they do a heck of a job here. So the backside uh, of Minnesota slants. And Rasheed Walker, who got benched later in the game, was going for initially to step to uh, step to Elton Jenkins for a B and step back and shut the door on the tight end block with, with Tucker Craft and got him upfield to the th- second level. This thing's out the gate. I mean, it's not a touchdown because it's 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 AJ, but this thing's out the gate. This is a really, really well-blocked play. And it doesn't work out. Jordan Love's got to do some Houdini stuff here in the backfield. Ends up making the play, but then Rasheed Walker's downfield. Why is he downfield? Because it was a run play. I mean, this is just kind of how this is how life is right now. So it's third and six. We get them to jump. We're empty backfield. So it's three by two to the left. And you see here, you got everybody pushing off, and you've got your tight end coming across, and he's basically one on one with a with a dropping linebacker with his back to the 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 receiver. He's, fa- he's facing the quarterback. This is a big play in the making, but because listen, Aaron Rodgers, <clears throat> you get a free play, you throw it down the field. He ends up chucking this thing into double coverage just because he can. But this is where you see the, the you see the receiver on the forty one yard line here on the left side of the screen. This is where the evolution of the position comes. Like, man, take the 20-yard gain. It's okay. So you get to third and one. And again, microcosm of the entire season is this drive. You're on the 29 or 28-yard line. And the center who's making the calls for the entire team goes the wrong direction. Harrison Phillips, guy from Buffalo. He's he's kind of a, you know, he's a he's a good player in the National Football League. He's a good player. He's not a great player. He's a good player. He looked like an all pro yesterday on a number of plays. I'm going to show this from the end zone. And this is really simple. You watch the footwork of everybody else. We got a double team between John Rennie and Zach Tom. Elgin Jacobs, Rashid Walker are stepping to the right. Their guys step back out to the left. Myers is the only person that steps to the left. Ball's coming off the right side of the quarterback. He just steps the wrong. I mean, he really just stepped. He should be zone driving. The other way, he just steps the wrong direction. And this kind of stuff happens when things aren't going. Like, momentum's a real thing. And momentum can happen when you're doing well. And momentum can pile on when you're, you know, it's like getting that snowball rolling downhill. It can pile on. And right now, it just feels, I think, with everything that goes on, like, these guys aren't uh, insulated enough that they don't understand that Josh Myers knows that people are asking about his job and this and that and the other thing. And I, I've always thought that he had a, a bright future. That being said, this is very perplexing. Usually the center's the, the one guy that you could trust to go the right direction. That's all. So I got to punt the ball away. Opportunity knocked early, right? Quay Walker has this one in his in, in his hands. Sometimes you miss a play like this, there's 11.54 left in the game, in the first quarter, okay? With second and eight, Green Bay Packers can pick this ball off on their side of the 50. Okay, it's a whole different ball game. Again, momentum is a big deal. That's not the play of the game. I'm not saying they're going to win because of that. I'm, I am saying that when you have a fragile team, momentum's a really big deal. So Lucas Van Ness is trying to rush. He rushes on O'Neal. And we didn't think Kirk Cousins was very mobile. He likes to stay in the pocket. He'll stay in there and take a hit. But if you rush inside and don't have anybody else out there, well, then he's just going to go and break contain. And again, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about these guys stay on, on schedule. They move the sticks. They get they get three, four, five yards when this could have been a throwaway. It's just the little things that make a huge difference. And now you look at, one thing the Vikings did a ton, they did it last week. They did motion to bunch. They did motion from bunch, but they used a lot of bunch motion. And you see that we've got a soft zone coverage here on a third and 10. And what they're going to do is last week they would chip Bosa with Hawkinson and then they'd have him run kind of a trail route. Well, they do the exact same thing. No chip now because they don't need the chip. They run more of like an, a tight end arrow route, which is, uh, or a Texas route, excuse me, which is kind of you go out in the back end like you're making a uh, like you're making the inside of a K. 
and he catches it right around the sticks, close play, and they end up missing a field goal. So we go back. Now, so it's 0 0. They've had some success moving the ball. We get a little lucky. We, you dodge a bullet by by uh, them missing the tight end. So you get the ball back. And this is kind of what we're talking about when you, what are we trying to accomplish? What's the identity? You got to clean it up. This second series. First thing, number 90, Bullard steps out. Tight end's got to see this. Tackle's got to communicate it. You got to be able to read the keys and indicators, but he doesn't step down and cut off this block. He doesn't take good footwork. I'm talking about the tight end, Tucker Craft. So instead of being a bigger gain, he gets tackled for a three, four yard gain. Again, oh, three, four yards. That's great. Not if it's not great if it could have been 10, right? Because you don't have many 10 yard runs this year. Go to the second player, Aaron Jones. This is not a good ball. This is a bad throw. Still can make the catch. Next play, we got motion over. Titans walked up. Look at the space in the middle of the field they've created because the, the Minnesota Vikings, Brian Flores, loves to what? Show blitz and also bring the guys, right? So one way or another, you think you're going to have a little bit of space in the middle of the field. You motion over to make sure you got the matchup you want. You have the opportunity. Ball's there. Does he not get out of his hands? Does he mess with the call? I don't know, but he doesn't make the play. Good. Chris Cooper coaches the the line for the, for the Minnesota Vikings. Chris Cooper was a, a Pro Bowl guy for the world champion Denver Broncos back in 2014 or 2015, played guard. Worked with him. Miami. Super, super smart guy, amongst other things. If you think for a second that his guys don't know that when your three technique is this tight and that linebacker's stacked almost over the right guard, that they need to change their call and have the center come to the, the right guard, then you're crazy, Okay. This is a textbook play by the Minnesota Vikings because you're just you're telegraphing what your intentions are. And I'm not saying and this is always the hard part with Green, Green Bay is not the only team that does this. Every team does this. It's always interesting to me when I see teams cheat thing, you know, cheat to get to spots, but they show that they're cheating all the time and then you get exploited. And so this is like a 10 yard run. And it's like, for what? You could have just played this thing straight. What do we like again? What are you trying to accomplish? Do you not think? Do you not think that is that whether that's Slayton, whether that's Kenny Clark, can't beat their second year right guard? I mean, is that what we're saying? That's the kind of stuff I just don't understand. One thing we talked about last week uh, with the preview was the Minnesota Vikings are going to try to use a lot of empty sets. They want to get five guys out in, uh, in, in the routes. Because Kirk Cousins is doing such a good job of getting rid of the football. And so that maybe forces you to go into nickel. If you go to base, we saw it. Uh, it might mean that Preston Smith on multiple occasions had to drop. Um, and if you want to pressure, now you've got, what is it, 53 yards of width with right now 70 or 80 yards of depth. And you've got five people carding five people. So you feel really good about the situation if they decide to bring pressure. So these empty sets, you got a three by two. And the ball's gone. And it's gone on time. I mean, there's really no way that you're going to get to Kirk Cousins if he throws that ball. I mean, if, you're, if your offensive line is made of paper mache, he's still getting rid of that football. He's just throwing on time. They just do a really good job of it. This is a uh, – I have a couple Preston Smith clips because, again, what he I think he brings to the, ta the, the table as far as – Aggressive run defense, obviously made a play in the passing game late. But this is what you're supposed to do. Reset the line of scrimmage every time. He just he just does such a good – you cannot block him with a defensive end – or excuse me, a tight end. Knocks down. I mean, it's just – he just says – it's such an underappreciated uh, part of the, uh, of the football game that's, that's critical to success. These guys are running in cuts. And I know you can't take somebody's head off anymore. We're not even breaking on the ball. So you see the top of the screen. I think this is against Jair. In cut right at the at the uh this is second down and 12. Right at the first down marker. There's three guys in the area. We don't have a safety break. It it's just there's not a lot of there's not a lot of fear about running across the middle. These guys live in the middle of the field, talking about the Minnesota Vikings. 
It's perplexing. Third and one. So they showed this last week. They motioned from bunch to this kind of like, I don't know, flight of, of receivers here. And they see that in the original bunch, Hawkinson's the point man, and they were going to man up. So what do they do? They pick him. And when I say they pick him, it's a yard off the line of scrimmage, so they can still pick him. And they knock him. They knock his receiver on his backside. They use Rasul. They run Rasul's guys off. Rasul's got outside leverage, so he's given up inside leverage, right, which is okay because you have safety help. But now Hawkinson is wide open. Great play, great play design. Now, this is the kind of stuff that, again, what kind of football team do you want to be? This is a hammer meets nail moment and not in the good for us. I think this is Cam Akers on a touchdown run. And I don't know exactly what the reads are for Quay here, but it looks like we have safety coming down in the play side A or B gap so he can hang backside here. The nose tackle gets pushed over, so he's not in the right hole, and then he just gets run over for the last two yards. And that's just – that's tough. Rasheed Walker got benched uh, for Yash Naiman. I don't know if it was an injury or performance. Um, this certainly didn't help. We call this pocket math, right? This is geometry of the pocket. So you hike the ball on uh, what looks like the – 30 what's that the 33 yard line okay now jordan love is right now at the 21 and a half so he has dropped back over 11 yards and the reason that i bring that up is the the geometry of the pocket has changed because of the shotgun but when you're taking your pass sets, and Rashid, there's no excuse for what Rashid Walker does here because he has actually has tight end chip help here or running back chip help out. And so he just whiffs right there. But you're so deep that even if things went well, there's a really good chance that you're going to get hit if you're 11 yards plus deep in the pocket. I don't know a single player that can go 11 yards deep in this in this league right now and sit there and pat the ball and not get hit because if the defensive ends are just going to start running the wheel and just eventually they're going they're going to win. It's going to happen real fast. So this is 100% on number 63 for not taking a good pass set and, and missing out, but you have to be smart about what's going on. If you're the quarterback, you can't sit your sit back at 11 or 12 yards deep and pat the ball. You that back foot hits 11, man, you got to get back to the 10. So we give up the ball, we punt it. And you know, with with Cousins, you have to figure out, okay, am I going to rush 4? Okay, I'm going to rush 4, I'm going to drop 7. Wide open in the middle. There's guys around him, they're just finding open space. You see this a lot now with receivers uh Going off script a little bit, as, as Travis Kelsey is making it real fame. It's like go to that area and then find the spot that's open. It's not just like settle down in the zone, run across if it's man. It's not as simple as it used to be. Now it's more. It's actually probably easier for you guys. More intuitive. Watch film. Understand where they stand. Don't stand there. That was on third and eight. This is a great play. So Jordan Addison's having a great year. I mean, starting last week, he really kind of showed up. This year, he played great against us. We're going to bring pressure. So they motion uh, they motion over, and then they bring Addison across, and we bring pressure into what looks like potentially a split full run. And Quay's coming on the backside. They've rocked everybody over, and they just catch us here. But this is what needs to stop. So I think this is Keyshawn Nixon comes down. And take your shot, man. Like, that dude weighs 330 pounds. You weigh... 215 pounds throw your body into harm's way right here and force that guy to cut back into the defense because if you let him go outside where the sideline is nobody else is there so take your shot this is a physical play just go ahead you're not going to make this play against those two guys you got 700 pounds of anger and fury coming at you you are not going to make this play make it by forcing them back 
Take your shot. Got to take your shot here. This is too easy. Rudy Ford here. Great job coming down. Like you highlight good and the bad, right? This could have been a huge play. This actually turns out to limit them to a field goal. They've got this thing blocked up. They got one person to beat. Ford comes down for like, this is like a two-yard gain. That was a really good job. You identify, get down there, be the hammer, not the nail. Talk about the offensive line. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let me get rid of this thing. There we go. Talk about the offensive line. We're losing on landmarks a little bit. So on this play, you just got a, an easy shotgun inside zone, and you got three guys that are missing on their landmarks on the inside. So the three most important players, right, left guard, center, right guard, are all either taking their, you know, so left guard, poor footwork, gets pushed in the backfield, you know, turns his ass to the hole, doesn't give the, the running back anywhere to run. Center misses on the – literally just whiffs on the second level. And then John Ryan Jr. at right guard is short on his landmark. So he's, he's letting this this uh, two-eye dr get driven right into inevitably where the, pl the play is going to be had. He's This guy's a man – or this guy's half a man into the hole already. So you're just leaving Aaron Jones no options here. And it's just – it's, again, you're losing on landmarks. Really, just say it the other way, you're losing because your footwork's not very good. These are the plays, you know, again, that, I guess that's a positive play because it's not, you know, it's not technically not a, uh, it's not now second and 12, but you got to get more out of opportunities to run the ball in like, you know, six man boxes. It's just got to, you just got it. There's got to be something that you're doing a little bit better. And for me, it all comes down to this footwork. It's not always. Receivers making drops. It's also we got to get the ball in the right spot. Third and 15. This is a design play. Really like this play. And it's a good job of getting Jordan Love by design to kind of waggle out on the move. We see the linemen are actually funneling all these players inside. So now he has a run pass option. And this, of course, is one of the ways we got, you know, some extra yards in the running game. TJ Slayton, uh, we combine here for a really good play. Again, there's some good things going on, on on both sides of the football. Holds off, shucks the right guard, comes in late, makes this play. So he gabs, the, he stops the hole, clogs the hole, sheds his block, makes a play. It's third and eight. I'm gonna back this up. This is this is interesting for me at least. Okay, so it's third and eight. You got a three by one. Yeah, KJ Osborne off of uh looks like he's gonna chip out. Running back to the right. So we bring pressure to the right where the running back is. Running back stays in, we chip out to KJ and immediately have a flat player open for business. And again, cousins is getting rid of the ball, guys. Like he's not gonna take a lot of sacks. There's nobody there. We have Preston Smith, who's our second best pass rusher in coverage because we're running a exotic zone blitz. And on zone blitzes, if you bring four on one side, you have to drop somebody on the other. Like this is just, you know, this is this is part of football. This is the way that everybody's done it forever. So this is how we still do it. Doesn't make have to make sense. <clears throat> But it's third and nine, and we get the first down. He gets to get first down by by three yards because you're playing soft. Because they went three by one, and we keyed on the running back and not the inside receiver. And he chipped out, was flat. They had planned for it. They saw it on tape. They made the conversion. Now, we've seen this play before. So we go motion in. We saw this last year. This was Justin Jefferson, though. They're going to go. We saw it. We saw this last week. Green Bay rocks their safeties, but they they tip it early. I don't know why they tip it early, but they tip it early. They don't just stay. They don't stay square. 
So you can you can always have an indicator. They've put Rasul now on on uh, outside leverage, and we're gonna have, he's gonna have free access to the secondary. We're talking about KJ Osborne here. Now we're not passing this off. And we're now we're wide open. So the, they did the same thing they did last year. Up top, they're going to go. They're either going to go post or or uh, run a nine to clear that space out. They're going to bring somebody in the flat to bring down the flat player. And then they're going to put this either as a foot race with Rasul, or if you're going to pass it off, you have to pass off to linebacker. Nobody's home. Easy catch and run. Big plays in the passing game. Two by two. And this is the little stuff you talk about staying on, you know, staying on schedule, staying on the sticks. This is simple. They're going to bring both linebackers after a big play. What do you do? You bring everybody. Okay. What do the Vikings do? They just run a quick stick in the middle of the field. We have a miscommunication between safety and corner, both going to the flat player. KG Osborne, after that big play, just turns around, grabs eight more. Easy pitch and catch. Right. Just staying on sticks. They go back to their bunch look. Now we're playing off. They're going to use the space of the entire field here. Okay. So they've got one across the field. They've got Hawkinson up the middle. And then they use the flat player. Why do they do this? Because when you diverge directions, you force the defensive backs to make an immediate decision. If they hesitate at all, they're wrong. This will come up later with our team. So you see Rasul Douglas here has outside leverage on either player, but he has really bad outside leverage against the tight end. So if they switch this and we see that they do, and he's not, he's no longer going to the flat. He's driving on the tight end. A good quarterback just makes the play and he's looking around like, what am I supposed to do? Touchdown. This is a real, you know, when I say palms up moment, it's like, got no answers for you. This is a palms up moment for me. Two by two, you motion over. Okay. <clears throat> Why is this a palms up moment? They walk their safety up on the line of scrimmage. So you have a two outside look and you're going to run inside zone, but you're, this is the exact same look that they had with McCaffrey last week when he got scored a touchdown. Two man over, you have a safety back. This isn't coverage. It's not the exact same. I'm talking about the way that we're running this play. So right now, you see that we can throw the wheel and have basically a one-on-one -on -one with two blockers. Or if you hand this ball off, because this is an RPO, this is like RPO quarterback. Looks like he has an option to run it, but you don't because we never do. We never do. You have now two guys, not one guy but two guys outside of the tackle, which means the defensive end is 100% going to crash and take this ball carry. Like you're not going to get any, this is a play that is designed to fail. If you're going to run it like this, you need to be able to check out of this and you had time. There needs to be a call, a check. You need to be able to run the swing here. You could run the option off the outside player. There's so many things you can do, but this is not the right option because you can't outrun the defensive end who's crashing. It's just an impossible ask. The offensive line could block this perfectly and you'd get zero yards. But so now they run, if they're not a spread out, this is turns into more of a bunch look, but they end up running a wide receiver screen. And Christian Watson just gets manhandled. I think that's by 44. And Dobbs thinks, oh, maybe I should go inside and immediately regrets his decision because he sees all purple. But instead of gaining five, just run and dive for five. You go back outside, get tackled for one, right? So it's like palms up the first time, but then again, we'd give him a chance here, and instead of getting five, he gets one, runs the wrong direction, not a good block by the receiver. Maybe couldn't trust him the first play either. Your guys have to make plays. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter. Like every receiver there knows how to block a defensive back on a screen. There's no like, well, I didn't understand the call. Well, I didn't know which direction he was going. Like everybody knows how to do that. This isn't this isn't one of those things where it's like, ah, it's the playbook. It's not the playbook. Another palms up moment. 
You got a two by two, tight end tipped off, it's chipping out. And this is just one of the weirder interceptions that you're going to see. Like, this is a really good play by this kid. I don't know how he did it. If you watch this thing in replay, it's just, it doesn't look like it should happen. Love Aaron Jones here, trying to make plays. Everybody coming down, trying to make plays. But that's tough because it leads to this. After the game, Jay Alexander had one of the weirder press. I can't tell if Jay Alexander was like messing with the media with his press conference or he was, you know, it was kind of, it was really weird. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but you should check it out. It was bizarre. Um, but he just says on this play, you know, we we're in man coverage and it was a good play call, but they have Addison in the backfield. So they use Addison as a running back, knowing that he's going to get a full head of steam. But I'm not circled on Jay Alexander, who Addison beats for the touchdown. I'm circled on Quay. Not because Quay did anything wrong, but again, big play. What do we do with the big play around the 23rd yard line? Well, they 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 bring linebackers. Okay. So they know this. Minnesota knows this. I know it. So the Minnesota knows it. They bring the linebacker, but he's got no chance. Because look at the anticipation by by Cousins. First of all, this is not a clean dog. Dog is a linebacker blitz. This is not a clean dog because of the, the, the way they gum this up in the middle with the two defensive tackles. So it, it looks like right now he has a free shot. He does not. But look at the anticipation on the throw. Now, if you go back and watch Jair, this is a really tough ask for Jair because he wants to go up and be aggressive. So you watch Alexander, he goes, he takes a step towards him. And it's like, I don't know if you should do that. He's got an eight yard head start. So you basically have to now turn, make sure you got to either hold the hell out of him or he's going to run right by you. There's just no way. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. Right. So great throw and catch touchdown first play after the turnover. I mean, it's just, those are momentum swings that are just really, really tough to get over from third quarter, trying to put something together. So this throw on the surface, you're like, man, it's a big play. This is fantastic. But here's the difference. Now, we just watched Kirk Cousins' anticipation of a throw. Okay? Now, watch the slot. I'm talking about the guy where it's the first and 10 little holograph they have on for the, uh, the show. Right now, that ball's gone. That ball's out of his hands right now. He just cleared the linebacker. Ball should be coming in. Why? Because if the ball's coming in now, and he catches the ball, like, right now, now he can make a move on the safety, but he's not ready to throw it. He, he needs to see it open still, and that's maybe the difference of where we're at to where we want to be with, with, with this quarterback is you see he's having to throw his back shoulder so he doesn't lead him into the safety. Why? Because the ball's not out when it needs to be. There was another play. I put it on Twitter. Same thing. They ran the stick, and the stick converts uh, to the outside man running a fade on cover two. Cover two came down and almost made the play. Well, that ball needs to go in the pocket, right? Between the flat defender and the cover two safety. You can't throw a lob. That ball needs to be fired in there. As soon as you clear the flat defender, that ball's got to be there. And if it's not, it's going to get picked. We saw it happen in another game on, on – uh, I was watching NFL Red Zone yesterday. It happened on another – I can't remember which game it was. But that happens all the time. You see that happen in high school and college all the time. You have to be ready to throw as soon as they clear. Now, that's a very simple uh, play design that they've run a million times. you got to be better at being able to anticipate that throw. The difference between Kirk Cousins' last throw and this throw is just anticipa anticipation. Both big plays, but there is a difference in the way they were delivered. It matters. Okay, so we're getting there in the screen game, and I'm, I'm trying to be – look, being a little bit funny here. This is a tough game to watch, Okay. So the good news is we didn't double team the D tackle. Okay. So the D tackle keeps rushing. Great news. Okay. So we're getting there. Bad news. Center and the right guard both whiff on the linebackers. Double whiff. Goes nowhere. Frustrating. Now, <clears throat> Harrison Phillips, kid from Buffalo. Good player. Not a great player, a good player. Today, he was a pro bowler. Why? We're asking 89 to block him by himself. On the backside. Now, 89, like we can break down how bad his footwork is and everything, but like, let's just say he steps underneath himself. But even if he didn't, which he does, but he has no chance of blocking that guy. I mean, this is silly. And, and, and in my mind, at least, as I watch this, I don't know that Yash shouldn't be helping him. I don't know. I don't know why Yash is, 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 
uh, piggybacking off of Elton Jenkins instead of helping there. I think he probably made a mistake. But you're going to get your running back hurt here, man. That's a bad deal. We end up scoring on this play. This is a great pick play by uh, for for Dobbs in the in the corner of the end zone. You can get somebody hurt. It's a problem. This is uh, Rashawn Gary doing exactly what TJ Slayton doing exactly what they're supposed to do when they are single covered, right? We'll show this play from the end zone. I think this is Quay who comes up and hits the B gap really hard, so you end up having single blocks here. Is that Quay? Yep. So Quay ends up hitting the right guard. So they come up, and now you have single blocks. Now Hawkinson could be helping on one of these guys, but the way that Rashawn Gary and TJ Slayton in particular push their guys directly back, reset the line of scrimmage from a vertical standpoint, Hawkinson has nowhere to insert now. So it's just – and it happened on the last play with Preston Swift that I showed. just turns into a complete disaster. Madison has nowhere to run. This is just really good defense by Slayton, really good defense by by Rashawn Gary. Big congrats to him. Uh, on the, the four-year, $107.5 million extension. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but what an absolute unit. He had a – he. I have showed this picture when he's getting flagged for a, a quarterback roughing the pass. It was an absolute crap call, but big congrats to him, man. It was amazing. Next play off of that, a flag, though. Another play off under center play action pass. Do a pretty good job of identifying this, I think, from a pass standpoint. And you see Cousins has somebody right in his face, but he's just on one right now, making some good plays, throwing with anticipation. Have a good run here. I mean, it's, you know, it's you're kind of 24 to 10. It's the fourth quarter. You're kind of feeling bad. It, this is tough, man. It's just really, really tough sledding. They bring everyone. Third and eight. These are the plays you got to have. Rondre Campbell just misses. First down. They end up blocking a field goal here. So we go all the way back down. And this is kind of the crux of the game you start thinking about. You're really only down two touchdowns. There's seven seven minutes, 52 seconds left. It's first and 10. You can get another first down on the five-yard line. I think we get a first down run here. And it's just not physical at the point of attack. It just, you know, it's without – you're in this game. It doesn't feel like it, but you're in this game. And you just got to get physical at the point of attack. So it's first and second, second and five. That's a good, I mean, that's a good game. So now what do we do? This corner's all the way turned around. The problem is, is that Wicks? I mean, where are his hands at? I mean, he's clearly, he's out of control. So Love's throwing this ball, but you just see freeze frame, like he's out of control. So of course he's going to duff this, you know? You got to be running within yourself, right? You got to stay within your phone booth. You got to have a good center of balance, center of gravity. If your hands are all over the place, that's just showing me that you're not ready to receive the ball. And again, this is a slant route, you know? You got to make some of these plays for your quarterback. Now we throw the fade. And listen, I just don't know that Chris, I don't think this is Christian Watson's strong suit. Like he's a six foot five long strider and you just watch this release. Like there's not a lot there that is scaring the DB. And then I don't know. I just don't know that this is, it will be in time maybe, but I don't know that that's the go-to play right now. Now this is, we run bunch fourth and five and we flood the, the, the right side of the field. I don't understand. I've just showed you the, uh, the Minnesota Vikings, similar look, similar situation. And they're going to use the entire field so they can drag a defender out here and get a better leverage matchup with that top top hat guy. So we run Watson across. We run the inside receiver on a, a little, maybe at the maybe at the sticks, in in cut, and we end up allowing double coverage inside bracket lever- coverage on the main receiver and it just the hard part there is you kind of wasted your your inside receiver when you can drag somebody away at least expand them by a step or two so that window's bigger in other words if i run the inside receiver on an out somebody's got to go so even if even if the outside zone coverage defender steps a, a, a step a step and a half that opens the window to throw the football for the quarterback 
it's not a question of like, we need to switch guys. They make a mistake. It's I either move half a step or a step off, or I hesitate for half a second. Either one of those things creates opportunities for window throws. This does not. Preston Smith appreciation post. Uh, their, uh, their, their left tackles having a good year. Everyone's there's, there's a, a couple of publications in the media that I do not appreciate, but, uh, they are very happy with his performance as so far. He's a really good player, but Preston gets him because why? Because when Kirk cousins comes out of the game and Kirk gets rid of the ball really fast, you get sacks. So sack fumble. So we just went four and out. Preston comes in, gets the sack fumble. And now I highlighted Elgin Jenkins here on this play. And I highlighted Elgin for a specific reason. He's the only one single blocking doing his job. Okay. Zach Tom falls over. Renning's got to go help him. Myers and Rasheed Walker or uh, Yash combined for the sack. Everyone says, I'll get rid of Rasheed Walker. Yash was getting beat as well. It's not a problem solved deal. Um, maybe one of them's better in the run game than the other. But this is not a problem solved deal. Again, DJ Wanham looked like an all pro yesterday, okay, against a number of players. Timing. I'll show this play from a different angle. But he's already asking for help here with the with the referee. But this is this play this play is not going to work because you don't throw the ball fast enough. Now, first things first. You put AJ Dillon on the outside. AJ is not running a fade. So where is Christian Watson inevitably going in this play? Well, the money is going to be he's going to the corner. Okay. Now that's okay. Like you got to run something down here. It's not, this is, you're, they're in dime. I mean, they got four guys, three guys deep and four guys across the middle. Like think, things, this is not an advantageous, they might not be in dime, they might be in nickel, but this is not an advantageous situation for the offense by any means. But the ball's got to be gone now. The ball's got to be in the air now for the end, for the end. You got a safety. So Harrison Smith comes down and tries to take the second, uh, the, the, the third man in. So you actually have the corner open. You get the safety coming over the top, uh, Matias, Matellus, excuse me, coming over the top, trying to chase this down. But you actually have a one-on-one -on -one with number 21 and Watson. But the route he is running, instead of, instead of running to the high angle and the ball is not out yet, so he's got to now fight for this thing instead of just trying to use his, you know, his speed, put the ball, put the ball to the corner and give him a chance. You try to throw this thing on a rope late. You're just hoping that you get a call. There's a difference that that's the difference between a successful play and an unsuccessful play. This play doesn't really have a chance unless you get the call. You put the ball in the corner and put it out early and let him run to it. Anything can happen. And then we got the fourth and 16. And he just takes off. Had those rushing stats a little bit, but it's a tough way to end the game. But it's apropos, really. Um, it's a tough game. So what do we get wrong? From you know, we talked about uh, in the preview. We had a couple of matchups we wanted to talk about. So first thing, D line getting pressure against a five man protection. Um, they ran a lot of five man. They wanted to get five people out in 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 the in the passing game. We got hurt more with pressure. I think. I think when we ran pressure, you know, we're not getting home. And I think that's the hard part about with this with this Kirk Cousins team is you run pressure, you don't necessarily get home very often. He's really good at getting that second third receiver. We saw it last week versus the 49ers. There's kind of a two part problem there, right? You got to cover long enough to hold to hold up to to get that pressure. And then you even saw that look when I, I highlighted Quay when. Um, when Alexander got beat on the on the uh, on the wheel out of the backfield, it's just if it's not perfect, and you don't have a clear path, you know it's it's tough to get home against good quarterbacks. We got four sacks. We got a, a number of times he was hit. Um, just not honestly, just not good enough coverage. As far as Kirk Cousins is just dealing right now, he, you know, towards Achilles. That's very unfortunate for that team for him. It's, it sucks to see somebody get hurt. Um, but when you put five out in a route with a guy like that who's just dealing right now, I think it's just too much. So you just wonder if if the pressure looks were, were worthwhile at all. I'm certainly going to put five man protection in there. You, you got to win your one 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 on one matchups. There's certainly guys on that team that you feel like you should be able to win. Um, not all the time, but enough. 
And uh, hey, kids just dealing right now. Not much to say about it. TJ Hawkson versus the secondary. That was our second matchup. TJ had six for 88 and a touchdown. I'm just going to give that win to him, um, which we thought might be the case, you know, certainly. But they had three guys over 80 yards uh, receiving, which is, you know, which means he's it's the, the quarterback's playing really well right now, unfortunately, uh, for them. And then Harrison Smith slashed their secondary versus that middle field uh, passing game for the Packers. Kittle had a big day in the middle of the field the, the weekend before. I think he had five for 78. Ours is no, non-existent, really. You think about where are where are the middle of the field throws? Where are the opportunities to throw in the middle of the field? And where are we connecting? Um, you saw there was a couple of opportunities there. We're not putting the ball there. We're putting the ball out in the, into the channels. We're putting the ball out into the sideline. And I, I just don't, you know, obviously that's a farther way to throw. Like if I throw the ball 50 yards and it only goes five yards vertically, 50 yards horizontally, it's still a five-yard gain. So my thing is like, let's make this really easy. You know, you see other teams putting the ball with these. I Again, I'm just living off this impression that Jordan Love is really good at making those throws. I just don't see a lot of those throws being made. Uh, so it's not, those are matchups. I don't know if I got those wrong, but you certainly would hope to see some of that stuff. Keys to victory recap. A comfortable Cousins is a confident Cousins. Can we play complementary defense and force him to hold the ball? Obviously not. Um, his stats were, were really – they're doing a great job getting number two quickly, uh, number three quickly. He just – you know, we saw it with the KJ Osborne on the on the, on the the dog, the, the the double dog. He just gets rid of the ball. They pick up eight. Our guys are scrambling, trying to figure out who to, who to cover. Um, the big thing here for me really is the difference in the teams is their ability to, their ability to move the chains – um, consistently to get positive yards on on plays that record that you know deserve positive yardage versus ours, um, they get they get six yards instead of our three, they get three yards instead of our zero, they complete a short pass instead of an incompletion. Like it's just you know they they don't drop it when we drop it. They they throw a good ball when we don't. Number two, Green Bay has to win the turnover battle this week. Uh, I think we tied that one to one because of Preston Smith late in the game. But we again, we didn't we didn't win the turnover battle. I thought that was a, a really, and by then the game was kind of over. Um, the play that they made on the interception, and then literally scored the next play on uh, Addison's wheel route. That was a huge play in the game, huge swing. And we're going down thinking that we might be an opportunity to at least a field goal out of that. So that's kind of a ten point swing if you look at it that way. And then three A and B get Aaron Jones more involved in the passing game. He was four for seventeen. I know he had the the drop on the awkward pass, but you know really not there. Uh, at least one or two of those were screens that didn't pan out. So it's not, you know, you're trying to get him involved, I guess, but it's like, how many screens do you run before you go, okay, we're not good at running screens right now. You know, if I'm at LaFleur, I'm kind of scratching my head. Like, wh what do you want me to call? There, you know, there's, a, there's two parts of this. You can, you can blame the play caller or, or you can, it's, it's, it's not, it's not as easy as that, right? You called plays that should have worked and they're not being executed. And then three B remove everyone from the box who cannot run block and reduce their front. Nope. Uh, DJ Wanham, uh, Bullard, Harrison Phillips, they absolutely killed us. Run and pass. Absolutely killed us. Um, look, those guys look like, you know, particularly DJ Wanham and, and, and Phillips. Like, listen, they had the guy with nine sacks coming into the game. I think, uh, I think Daniel Hunter had, was leading the league in sacks at that point. And these guys, I mean, he didn't have a great day, but these, man, these guys were all over the tape. I mean, just all over the tape. And I think the best thing, you know, when you when you really start thinking about uh, what the takeaway is, is like offensively, I just you still have no idea what the identity is. They do a lot of stuff on a very average level. In other words, you know, if if you if you went to a basketball player and said, "What do you do well?" They'd say, oh, "I like, I shoot well. I play deer defense. I'm a great passer. I have good court vision." You know, you go to these guys. It's like, what what is it that you guys do well? What is it on offense that you're like, I can hang my hat and we can do that? It's not the inside-outside zone. It's not the pin and pull. I mean, it's not the running game. And in the passing game, I just don't know from a concept standpoint, the screen game hasn't been what it, what you think it should from a blocking standpoint or a receiving. I mean, you see the one with with Dobbs. I mean, it's a bad block by Watson, but get five. I mean, you, know, you just sometimes you just got to go. Um so I just don't know what they're doing well right now. I think that's a that's a, a really tough question. Honestly, if you execute better, if you know, go back to the fundamentals of football. If you just do the fundamental stuff better, you will be better at all this stuff. You be seismically better, I think, in, in the running game. The areas of opportunity, two of these, I have three every week, and two of them haven't changed in four weeks. 
Number one, offense, running game has to improve. Offensive line has to play better. Absolutely. Number two, we have to improve com- tackling. We have to improve communication in the secondary. I thought tackling uh, wasn't the the issue this week, but communication in the secondary. And again, sometimes when a quarterback is dealing, I'm not. You, you don't give anybody a pass. But that quarterback is dealing. He was until he got hurt. That guy was playing at a high. The last two weeks, he's played as as good as anybody in the league. He's just playing at a really high level, and he's doing a good job of finding the second and third receiver. The third one's new. It's time, uh, time of possession is a two-way street. Okay, we lost the time of possession, thirty-six twenty-two to twenty-two thirty-eight. That's atrocious, and the reason that happens is one, we have three and outs. It, it goes back to can we stay on schedule? Can can we move the chains like like the uh, the Minnesota Vikings do? And right now, for whatever reason, it does feel like. And I've been on teams like this not very often, but I was in Carolina. I was on a couple teams like this. It's like when your quarterback gets hurt. And you get a first down, you feel like, oh, man, we got a first down. Or, you know, go out the first first series of the game and you move the ball 40 yards. Like, oh, man, like we really needed that. And right now I think that's how this team feels. And they're just looking – who's going to provide that confident spark to make it happen? It's not just going to happen itself. You know, going against the Rams this week and, and I think Stafford's hurt. But, they're, you know, Aaron, you got Aaron Donald. You got a couple guys that can play over there now. Um who is going to be the individual or the group that is going to lead this team out of what is a, a, a very flaccid approach to executing on offense? Best thing I heard today is the Rashawn Gary contract. Um, so four years, 107 and a half. I think it's relatively friendly. It's got some backloaded stuff, which is friendly for both both sides. In other words, like if you're a high level player, you don't care if your stuff's backloaded because you're banking on, oh, you want to pay me again after two? Like, is my cap number two big now? You know, if you want to keep pushing money back, you, you can do it one way or another. But I think this is friendly. They can go get somebody else uh, if they needed to pick up a player either, either by the trade deadline tomorrow or certainly looking for next year. Um, but he is just a guy that he came in, he's worked hard. You, you just see the improvement. You see the desire, you see the professionalism. Um, I'm a huge fan. I'm just a huge fan of guys. He's just like, you know, he's just a green Bay Packer guy. Uh, he's just a guy that when you think of the kind of people that you want in your locker room, you want on the field, you want doing dirty work for you. Like he's, he's just one of those guys, man. So it's a phenomenal amount of uh, – I don't know what he's going to do to celebrate, man, but it, I'll tell you what, it's, I better be a, a monstrosity because that is a lot of money. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Listen, I think that's it for today. I've said enough. Uh, we'll, we'll come back and do a uh, a preview uh, at the end next week. Find me out, MikeWall68 uh, on Twitter, Process to Perform on Instagram. Hit that like button on the uh, Process to Perform channel on YouTube. And, of course, shows brought to you by Believe – or excuse me. Show's brought to you by betonline.ag. Thanks for listening, guys.